There are some other things that are important in order to use the border node effectively. So let us look more closely at our settings and other border node options. Let's start with the effect structure shown. We shall set the padded area to 180 pixels wide and select white. Now select a color picked from the image itself for the border, blue from the water. Set width to 120 pixels. Reduce opacity a little and note that the border width is actually distributed 50% over the image itself and 50% over the padded area. Therefore, to start the inside of our border from the outer edge of our image, we need to offset it by 50% of our border width, that is 60 pixels. Remember that we need to put a minus sign before to read minus 60. The orientation of our border is now as we wish it. This did not really show up well in the last video, owing to the much smaller border width selected. Reset the opacity to 1, that is 100%. Let's shift the corner radius slider to the right and note the result. Set the radius to 0 0.04. If we wanted a small white border to define the image better, we could simply increase the offset for the border from minus 60 to minus 70 and in so doing, reveal part of the white padded area, which in effect looks like a little white border. Alternatively, we could miss the last step and add a new border in white, set up as shown, width 10 pixels with an offset at 50%, that is, minus 5 pixels. Observe the result. The border can be shifted horizontally, as shown using the left-right shift slider. Likewise, it can be shifted vertically using the top-bottom shift slider. The shape of the corners can be altered using the corner aspect slider. So lots of variations are available, not forgetting colour changes and opacity tweaks. Here are some examples. It will be interesting to see how effect designers use the attributes of the border node to create interesting border effects. The next video will use the border node in conjunction with place and merge node with the inclusion of added texture.